Now, the family have requested that we read this tribute to Sarah, beginning, Although Sarah left the island to pursue her dreams, she always loved coming home to Lurbost. It was her last wish to return home to her family for the short time that she would have left. This turned out to be much shorter a time than anyone could have anticipated. Sarah bore her illness with dignity, strength and inner peace. Sarah never complained or blamed. Her only regret was going to be leaving her precious son, Jack. Sarah always cared for others. As a youngster, Sarah pursued her Duke of Edinburgh's award and particularly enjoyed her time helping out with the campaigners group. Later, Sarah attended the Lewes Castle College and became a nursery nurse. This took her as far away as Sudbury, where at first she worked as a nursery nurse and then met her husband Keith. Sarah later worked in the local hospital as a healthcare assistant until her illness meant that she could no longer continue. Sarah, Keith and Jack made it home to Lurbost for their last Christmas together as an extended family at the end of 2023. In her last moments on this earth, we are glad that she was surrounded with love and that Keith, Tracy, Ian and Elaine had each other for support at the most terrible of times. Thus ends the tribute. Now let us worship God and let us sing to his praise from the Scottish Psalter and Psalm number 1 to 1. We shall now read the Bible from the New Testament and the Gospel according to John and chapter 14, reading at the beginning. Let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, that where I am you may be also. And you know the way to where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. 
how can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way, and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you had known me, you would have known my Father also. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father, and it is enough for us. Jesus said to him, Have I been with you so long, and you still do not know me, Philip? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, Show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me? The words that I say to you, I do not speak on my own authority, but the Father who dwells in me does his works. Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me, or else believe on account of the works themselves. Truly, truly, I say to you, whoever believes in me will also do the works that I do, and greater works than these will he do, because I am going to the Father. Whatever you ask in my name, this I will do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask me anything in my name, I will do it. If you love me, you will keep my commandments, and I will ask the Father and he will give you another helper to be with you forever, even the Spirit of Truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him, for he dwells with you and will be in you. I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. Yet a little while, and the world will see me no more. But you will see me, because I live. You also will live. In that day you will know that I am in my Father, and you in me, and I in you. Whoever has my commandments and keeps them, he it is who loves me. And he who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I will love him and manifest myself to him. Judas, not Iscariot, said to him, Lord, how is it that you will manifest yourself to us and not to the world? Jesus answered him, If anyone loves me, he will keep my word, and my Father will love him, and we will come to him, and will make our home with him. Whoever does not love me does not keep my words, and the word that you hear is not mine, but the Father who sent me. These things I have spoken to you while I am still with you, but the Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all that I have said to you. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you, not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. You heard me say to you, I am going away, and I will come to you. If you loved me, you would have rejoiced, because I am going to the Father, for the Father is greater than I. And now I have told you before it takes place, so that when it does take place you may believe. I will no longer talk much with you, for the ruler of this world is coming. He has no claim on me, but I do as the Father has commanded me so that the world may know that I love the Father. Rise, let us go from here. Amen. May God bless to us this reading from his holy word, and to his name be all the praise and glory. I'm going to invite Angus Donald to lead us in prayer now. Thank you. <coughs> O Lord our God, 
We are faced with the great question of eternity again today. And as we've heard before, you ask us to be still and to know that you are God. You are our creator and our redeemer, and we come to worship you and to remember and to give thanks for Sarah's life and to pray for our family and friends and this community and to support them in their loss. We thank you, O Lord, for every good memory the family has of Sarah, for the way she loved her family and for how much she was loved by her family and for the way her life was marked by caring for others. We thank you too for the bravery with which she fought her illness and we come to you asking for your comfort for the whole community, but particularly for the family who find it so difficult when they're faced with our loss. We pray for Sarah's husband, Keith, and the son, Jack, because they have lost a mainstay of their family. Lord, you are near to those with broken hearts, and you listen out for their cries of help and Keith and Jack need your help. We pray for Jack, Lord. We ask that you would draw near to him and assure him that he's a special boy in your sight. And you are the one who took a shepherd boy and who helped him to defeat a giant. And we know that you can help Jack to defeat all the giants that confront him in his life. Lord, help them to find you in their great need and enable the whole wider family to gather around them to support and encourage them in the days ahead. We pray for Sarah's parents, Hector and Angela, in their great loss. We pray that you would uphold and strengthen them. You are the God who knows what it is to lose your own son in death. Lord Jesus, you wept beside the grave of your friend Lazarus, and you know the profound loss we feel at times like this and how our world has changed forever. But you're also the God of all comfort, and your arms are outstretched towards us, calling us to come to you when nothing around us seems to make sense. We pray for Sarah's sister Tracy and her husband Ian and their children, Harvey and Izzy. We thank you for their love for Sarah, for their efforts to get her back to Lewis during her final illness, even though it meant traveling through storms and bad weather. We thank you for the strong bonds of family love. And Lord, it reminds us of your loving kindness and that you will never stop searching for us. We pray for Angela's parents, Billy and Violet, as they grieve the loss of their granddaughter, we pray for Hector's sister, Norma, her husband, Alistair, and their family, Hector's brother, Lal, and his wife, Margaret, and their family. And we pray for Angela's sister, Norma, and her husband, Ian Murdo, her sister, Lisa, and sister, Lorna, and her husband, Bob, in Australia, and all their families. We thank you, Lord, too, for the great support given to Sarah, Keith, and Jack by their friends, Ella, and her family, Donna and her family, Andy and his family, and Rebecca and Adam. Lord, bless them richly for their kindness, which reflects your own loving kindness in sending Jesus into the world as our Saviour. We thank you, Lord, for your promise that where two or three are gathered in your name, you are present. We thank you that you are here with us today. You are near to us. And we thank you that we can all pray to you to help us and to come into our lives. And no matter how much we have avoided you till now, or how far away from you we may feel, you are near and ready to answer our cry. You tell us to seek the Lord while he may be found, to call on him while he is near. Help us, Lord, as a wider community and a wider family, so that we don't use our own feelings of uselessness and helplessness in such a sad situation as an excuse to do nothing. 
A woman was once commended by Jesus when she anointed him because he said she did what she could. Help us to do what we can to help this family, whether that be in prayer for them and what we say to comfort them or what we do. Lord, my memories of Norma, Hector and Lal go back to the early years of childhood when they would come to see us and we would come to see them at all the time. Our grandfather would lead family worship both morning and evening and pray for us all. And his earnest prayer was that his whole family would come to know the Saviour that he held so dearly. And these prayers are still before you. You are the Almighty God. You're not bound by time as we are. So I pray now that you would answer these prayers and every prayer that has gone up from here today and that you would bless all in this family and this whole gathering and those watching online, even in this time of great sorrow, that you would open our hearts to the promise of Jesus Christ who said, whoever comes to me, I will never cast out. Lord, we ask these things in the precious name of Jesus, our Saviour. Amen. Allow me to say one or two words. The uh, short tribute I read from the family ends with these uh, very solemn words. The most terrible of times. The most terrible of times. Talking about the passing of Sarah. And the disciples who are mentioned in this portion of scripture we read, they also felt they were going through terrible times. Jesus, the Savior, had been with them for three whole years. They had uh, seen his glory, known something of his power, heard his teaching, and known, known his love and friendship. But he has just told them, that he is going to leave them. And their hearts were sad. It was a terrible day for them. But he says, let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. Continue to believe in God. That's what the psalmist David was saying in Psalm 31. He tells us he was surrounded by enemies. And he felt under threat from all sides. But you know what he said? My times are in your hands. All our times are in his hands. And there's a marvellous section of scripture. All scripture is marvellous anyway, but in relation to this particular issue, in Ecclesiastes chapter 3, it says at the beginning, for everything there is a season, a time for every matter under heaven. And then it explains some aspects of life and experience. And it starts with this, a time to be born and a time to die. And David knew that. He knew that the time of his birth was in God's hands. The circumstances of his providence were all in God's hands. For God's works of providence are his most holy, wise and powerful, preserving and governing all his creatures and all their actions. And the time of his death was in the Lord's hands. And it's to such a God we are called upon to look this morning. Jesus said it to the disciples, Believe in God. Continue to trust in him. Our times are in his hands. And then he says, believe also in me. And why was he saying that? Because he was about to leave them. And he was going to fulfill a task on their behalf that they couldn't fulfill by themselves. He was going to 
open a new and living way for them. A way that culminates in glory at last. And he says himself in this chapter, I am the way, the truth and the life. So in the most difficult of times, take take hope that Jesus knows you where you are and that he has gone ahead and he has opened the way into glory at last for all who believe in him. The most terrible of times can be the most blessed of times. And such was the case with the disciples. The Jesus who was about to leave them at this point, he went through death and rose from the dead. And now, through the gospel, he is calling sinners like you and myself to himself. He says, look unto me and be saved all the ends of the earth, for I am God and there is none else. A time of sorrow, yes indeed, but also a time to remember with thankfulness. We remember Sarah's life. Sam remember her as an individual, as a young girl, full of life, Nevertheless, I lost sight of her for many years. Her ways parted. But the Lord knew her where she was. And she married and had a family. Be thankful for that, for the good things of life. Also, for us all, it's a time to take stock. Where am I? Not long since I was across here at another funeral service. Mr. MacLeod, the minister who was living out in Durbost. He was, I think, 89 years. Twice Sarah's age. But the Lord speaks with the voice of death to young and old, as he proves to us today. And we are encouraged to take stock of our own position. Where am I? in relation to the Lord. Am I prepared for death? Ask then to seek the Lord while he is to be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way and the ungodly man his thoughts. Let him return unto the Lord and he will mercy upon him and to our God for he will abundantly pardon. One more thought. On the cross of Calvary, Jesus hung, nailed in his hands and his feet. On either side of him were condemned thieves. One of these thieves prayed to the Lord Jesus at the very eleventh hour of his life. And his prayer wasn't long. And he said, Lord, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Why was he encouraged to pray in that way? Because he was convinced that Jesus was the Savior, able to save him from all his sins, his bad record, his lies, his violence, everything else. Jesus is able to cleanse us from all our sins. Wouldn't that be a marvellous prayer for us all today to have as we continue here and as we leave this place and go home? Lord, remember me when you come into your kingdom. If the Lord remembers us with grace and love, our life will be fulfilled. Our time of death will be a blessed time for the souls of believers at their death are made perfect in holiness and to immediately pass into glory, and their bodies being still united to Christ, rest in their graves until the resurrection. And at the resurrection, believers shall be raised in glory, openly acknowledged and acquitted at the day of judgment, and shall be made perfectly blessed in the full enjoying of God.
through all eternity. What a gospel. What a saviour. May God bless these thoughts to us. We'll bring our worship to a conclusion at this time, singing from the 23rd Psalm. The Scottish Psalter and Psalm 23. The Lord's my shepherd I'll not want. He makes me down to lie in pastures green. He leadeth me the quiet waters by. To the end of the psalm, goodness and mercy all my life shall surely follow me and in God's house forevermore my dwelling place shall be. The whole of the psalm to God's praise, the Lord's my shepherd. <coughs> The Lord's my shepherd, I not want. He makes me down to lie in pastures green. He assure the family of our continued prayers on their behalf, thinking particularly of Keith and Jack, who will feel this parting most severely. We pray that the Lord will continue to bless and uphold you, and that the Lord will be about you as a flaming fire 
and as a blessing in your life every day. We remember also Hector and Angela and Tracy, and uh, we pray for your blessing to be upon them. Also the grandparents, the wider family circle, and all the friends, some of them I haven't seen for a long time until today. Uh, and we pray the Lord's blessing to be upon each one according to our needs. The Lord knows our needs, our minutest needs as well as our greatest. And he's able to supply all our needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Now we'll stand for the benediction and after the benediction, please resume your seats for a moment until the family can make their way out of the building, first of all. Pronounce the benediction now. Now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest upon and abide with you all now and forevermore. Amen.